if an air intake manufacturer says, this makes 20 more horsepower, they're not wrong, because right there it does. I hope you enjoy the fact that I didn't have a solid four minutes of dyno run. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of South Down Garage. This video is proudly brought to you by Rotec Performance, who has sent all these awesome parts so that we can do this stage two tune with delete, with cold air intake, so we are getting into it now. We're just down at Post Haste Performance. We're getting the car ready on the dyno and we're gonna start doing the dyno runs. We're gonna do some secret testing as well because with the cold air intake, it also offers that, that flap that you saw me install in the last video or the plate. I have the plate installed right now and I just wanna see if there's a difference between having the bottom plate installed and not. So that's also gonna be in this video. So thank you guys for coming along. Thanks for the support. And let's go take a look at what's going on here with the Jetta. We're just getting everything plugged in, trying to find uh, signals for the RPM, everything else. So we're just setting it up here and we're gonna get into it very shortly. Okay, so one of the things that we've done here is with our Jetta, we had to add a boost reference to this. So, We've been under the hood for the last little while and the key thing you want to do when you're working on your car is get as hot as possible before you take it apart and add this boost to add this boost reference so that we can hook it up to the dyno and see how much boost we're making preferably the difference between stock and when we go to aftermarket with the stage two and to see what how the intake helps how it, spool, how it spools up, everything, all this stuff to find out for you guys what you should do when you're modding your TDI. Do you just, if you, all you can afford is the intake, is that is that a good way to go? So, this is what we're doing. We're just gonna get ready to put everything back together. We have the old intake out, charge pipe out to add this so that eventually we can add a video later and show you guys how to do this too because I haven't seen any of that online, so if you think that's something you would like to see, let me know in the comments below, and that's something we'll look into in the future, adding a boost cage. All right, let's get back, we'll clean everything up, put the intake back in, and we're gonna get to testing. Okay, so we're done the stock run. So we're looking at the torque versus horsepower number. So we're about 119 horsepower, 120 horsepower, and peak torque is about 206 uh, foot-pounds of torque. We're looking at 21 pounds of boost with the turbo. So now let's go ahead and putting the intake on and see if that makes a difference. So we're basically going over the difference between if you have the bottom air box open and if you have it closed. One really interesting thing is this solid line right here is the stock first run we did with the intake with the closed air box. And what you're seeing right down here actually at the very end of the RPM, you're losing power. Through the whole range, it seems to be right around the same. At the very top, you're getting a little bit more, but it's it's really not conclusive. So when we're running all the way back down to the bottom and you're losing it at the back end, that's where that's not good. So uh, if you have this intake, I would, I would just go ahead and not open the bottom and leave it closed. That way you're keeping the air as cool as possible because if we don't have cool air, then 
this isn't gonna work. This, you're basically, you wanna give your intercooler less work to do by making sure that you've got relatively cool air. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna remove the intake, we're gonna do the tune, and then we're gonna move on to see what the tune does with a stock air box. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so now that you've seen both the, in, the stock intake and the aftermarket intake, let's, we're looking at the graph here, and the big, you, I, you might have been asking before what this was, it was just how I ran the dyno, or how we did the, set everything up, but this dotted line here is your aftermarket intake. So what you're seeing here is less torque right up top here, but what you, what you really need to look at is this curve here with the boost. It worked harder to get this boost because it was drawing a lot harder. The turbo just wasn't getting that free flowing intake. Whereas you can see this where the, the boost consistently had a very nice curve. It wasn't like, it wasn't a sharp curve. It was a gradual curve. So when we're looking at the increase of the horsepower right at the top here on stock, this could be attributed to because the turbo was working so hard, the wastegate had to uh, account for the limited boost and it dropped, it dropped off at the top. So it may have had this spike here. So that's not really important what to look at. It's how quickly the intake came up. So that's what we're looking at. And, and the uh, boost actually did creep higher. So it was about 22 pounds of PSI of boost. So over the long period, they end up being about the same towards the end of the graph, but you're really seeing the boost and the torque pick up right away, including the horsepower. So that's something to consider about this intake. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna flash the computer with a stage two TuneZilla tune and then we're gonna see what the stock intake makes with that setup. So let's get to it. So what we're doing now is we're gonna plug in the TuneZilla flash. So I'm gonna show you that more in depth in a different video, because this is a dyno video, so we don't wanna go into that right now. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug this in to our OBD2 port, turn the ignition on. Wow, this is a short cord. All right, so let's go to tune. Continue with the writing of the file, yes. So we have, oh, uh, interesting. So we've just done the stage two tune run with, a, with the aftermarket intake. Now we can take a look at the data. So we're gonna hit this, get this going here. So let's take a look here. So you see, it actually, the cold air intake actually loses power slightly, but the really interesting part is right down at the bottom here where you saw the large dip, right here where you see the dip, the stage two with stock intake was struggling here. It kept dropping the boost right here. You see that? So what happened here, which is kind of interesting is with the intake, you actually didn't get that correction from the turbo, which is really cool. Now, I'm not super concerned with the fact that this made a little bit less power than without the tune. My concern is that actually, the thing you really need to look at is how quick this turbo spools, because that's the big difference. Right now with the dips, we wanna wait because what I think is happening is we have a considerable amount of back pressure. So we have increased horsepower. We have, a, we have a bigger intake, which is actually doing a lot once it's tuned. 
that's where you're gonna see a massive difference in your intake. And you can see it right here, like it is a big difference. Like if we drag the line over here, right there, we're talking 119 horsepower over 140 horsepower. Like that's, that's 20 horsepower. Regardless, if an air intake manufacturer says, this makes 20 more horsepower, they're not wrong, because right there it does. So it actually makes 20 more horsepower and it makes, it makes 170 feet, 173 foot pounds of torque right there where it's making 200 foot pounds of torque. This is near the end of the range. The other interesting part here is if you drag the cursor down a little bit further to the very end, this is also interesting because right at the very end of the power band, we're talking, we're talking 130 foot pounds of torque versus 117 and you're looking at under 100 horsepower and 110 horsepower with it with the two, with the uh, intake so it actually so what happens it spools up quicker it gets rid of a 40 horsepower or a 20 horsepower dip and it keeps everything spooling so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the car off the dyno go back home and we're gonna put in the aftermarket or we're gonna put in the DPF delete and then we're gonna come back to the dyno and try again Thank you guys for watching this episode of Sell Down Garage. If you like this video, hit the like button, consider subscribing, and let me know what you think of this video down in the comments. I hope you enjoy the fact that I didn't have a solid four minutes of dyno run like I did on the last stage two video. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you want any of these products, please go over to Artec's website and take a look at what they have. These are really nice people. They're really awesome to deal with. Even Toonzilla, it's a Saturday. I ended up calling Johnny to ask him a question because everybody is closed. And thankfully he was able to answer some questions for me. So Rod Tech has helped me make this video. So if you like what you see, go to their website, take a look at their products and send a thank you from me and let them know that Kurt sent you. If you want to see more content on how to install a DPF, take a look at this video over here. If you want to see if a DPF makes more horsepower than stage two, take a look at this video over here. Until next time guys, everyone have a great day, take care, and get outside and do something fun with your car. Bye for now!